and it says starting recording. Yep. Okay, it's recording now. Hello, everyone. I'm here with Carlos Piscina, who you all know as the original Raiden. He was also the voice of Bo Raicho in Mortal Kombat Deception, and um, he was also mocap um, in Mortal Kombat Deadly Alliance and Mortal Kombat Armageddon <laughs> and was also like I think the like martial arts um board like like coordinator or something like that for like the other games like supervisor. Yeah, I was uh I was uh hi everybody, I'm Carlos Piscina. Uh, I was the lead animator for a while and then choreographer, you know, did the whole quality control for the, you know, the characters and everything, did the motion, ran the motion capture studio for NetherRealm. And uh, uh, I just want to say, God bless. Thank you for everything. And, um, you know, everything I say here is just my own opinion and not representative of any corporation. So. That's how we like it. Thank you. For the fans, by the fans. It, well, yeah, and I, I consider you guys friends more than than, than fans because you know I haven't met anybody. I, well, I've met you obviously, but you know if I haven't met you yet, I, I look at you as a friend I haven't met because you guys put us where we're at. You know, you guys support us, so we really appreciate that. Yeah, because if it wasn't for us fans, there would be no franchise. It would still be stuck on Mortal Kombat One. Absolutely. Or, uh, you know, we we'll, we would still be doing what we love, but, you know, nobody would, I guess, pay attention to it, right? Yeah. All right. Um, I believe the first question is, um, what's the story behind the um, yells that Raiden did in the games? Well, that 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 is, uh, you know, and I've, I've gone over this several times, that is a Dan Forden question on how you know, those sound calls came about. Obviously, when I'm in the studio, I, I do yells, you know, you know, when you're punching and kicking. But the, 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 the famous Raiden, you know, everybody wants to know what Raiden says. I know all of the sayings, but that's a, a, a either a Dan Forden question or, a, you know, for him to reveal it or an Ed Boon question, you know, because I don't want to take that away from those guys. That's okay. something that they came up with. I think I should have uh, elaborated, like, um, wh like, what's the, like, the history on the origins of it? Uh, well, it, you know, there's, there's, you know, there's different perspectives of what, what, you know, how that came about, you know, and, uh, now I still look at it like that's, a, you know, that's a, it's still a Dan Forden question. That's more of a sound question. Well, no. because I remember seeing in some interviews that your brother did, um, it was like um, you were getting ready to do the move, and, like on the stairs that he made, and like when they actually asked you to lift up your legs, um, you let out a scream like, "Oh my balls!" <laughs> well, I, I will say this: I did do that, you know, because you had to, actually had to like. You actually had to land on it. You couldn't just like flop and then lift your legs up. So you had to, yeah, you know, so it's, it's more of a stunt where you got to like just go immediately horizontal, you know. But yes, I did. I did. I did smack my, uh, you know, privates on it and it did hurt. So I did yell something. <laughs> yeah, it would have been a lot easier to like, like have it like on, a, like have you like on a table. Yeah. Rather yeah, than but like that. Yeah, exactly. It would have been easier, but you know what? That's we had the stairs. It was easier to do it on the stairs, and you know, doing when we do a lot of stunts or or I I'm not working for another realm any longer. I'm retired, but when you know we used to do a lot of that stuff, we would have whatever was available. You know, even if we planned it, sometimes you would plan something and use a prop. And even that wouldn't work out, and you'd have to like, you know, you would immediately have to adapt to the situation. But yeah, good times. What styles of martial arts have you studied? Um, I'll go down the list. So uh, uh, most they're mostly Chinese. 
I will say that. So I've done uh, La Hobafa, which is kind of like a, a, a Tai Chi. I've actually done Tai Chi, Chen style. Done Bagua Zhang. I've done Yin Fu and Chung and uh, Gao style Bagua Zhang. You know, anything that, uh, like Praying Mantis, Seven Star Praying Mantis, and just regular Northern Mantis. Done a lot of like contemporary and traditional martial arts, whether it's Shaolin. I've done almost everything. There's maybe a couple I haven't haven't personally learned, but you know, um, back in the '90s when VCDs were available and DVDs, and you know, we would just try to learn whatever we could, you know, that way or find somebody who knew like a couple and they call it roads, which is kind of like a kata or um, a form. You know, if you learn certain roads, you would probably learn the whole entire martial arts, you know. So uh, my favorite right now is Bagua. So, you know, done sword stuff, done staff, done spear, done, you know, you name it, I've, I've probably done it. Yeah, and the staff is more mm, of Braden style anyway. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Love the staff. Yeah. Have you studied any? Uh, I actually, when I was really young, I learned Taekwondo. Nice. And um, when I got older, I learned American Karate. Which Very was like cool. Which was an occasion of various martial arts. Yeah. And if I had actually graduated from infantry school in the Army, I would have learned Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. That very nice art. Yeah, they're all they're all great. Yeah. You know, and and people always ask me like, what what is the best martial arts? Because I, I got this recently at a at an expo, and I just said the one that you're concentrating on and learning. You know what I mean? That's the most. That's the best martial art. You know. Mm -hmm. And um, and of course, a lot of people ask like, what um. Like, what's the main reason of learning martial arts? And I said, like, asked me, why did I study martial arts? And I said, well, so I could prepare myself to defend myself. I have to. Yes. But I hope I never have to do that. A a absolutely. You know, that's why a lot of people get into it. They, they want self-defense. And then, you know, and, and martial arts is like anything. It could be as deep as you want to get into it, whether it's philosophical or just self-defense or just punching and kicking just to defend yourself, you know, and, and that's, what's great about martial arts. You know, you could, you could propagate or branch off to whatever, you know, whatever technicality or, or, or depthness you want to get into it. Like if you want to go to turn, do tournaments and stuff like that. Yeah. Competition, you know, there's also MMA, you know, and there's, you know, if ultimately you're like, Oh, I want to be philosophical about it. Every single martial arts has some type of spirituality or philosophy to it. Yeah. So. Uh, um, why wasn't Raiden in um, Mortal Kombat 3 or Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3? Well, that's a, that would be a John, you know, a John and Ed question, but ultimately I started working, I started working at Midway during that time. Yeah. And, you know, it's like uh, it's it's almost the same reason that Sonia might have been not, you know, and this is just an assumption on my part, you know, or speculation. It's just like why Sonia wasn't in two, more or less, to an extent, you know, yeah. I, I think there need to be a break in the story. So that way, this is once again, speculation, you know, and, and a John Tobias Ed Boon question or, you know, th this is one of those things where since Raiden wasn't there, you know, Shao Kahn, you know, was able to open up that portal and come in and not have anybody to, to, to block him. Once again, I mean, we can get into lore, like specificate, you know, specifics or certain details, but this is just an assumption, like on my part of how I understand the lore, you know, it's just one of those yeah. things. It's good that he wasn't. Cause then when he came back, he came back stronger, you know, yeah, trying like, to fight for like, earth realm. So, yeah, like say for instance, like some like some would speculate that he was like, um, Mortal Kombat, like during the events of the 
this game, like basically the Mortal Kombat three story. Um, Raiden was like seeking counsel from the Elder Gods or something like that, and like was explaining that Shao Kahn was doing all these, like was breaking the rules and stuff like that, and they told him not to intervene or anything like that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. That's a, it's a matter for the Earth realm to to defend themselves, you know, and not to, you know, not to have you know, a spiritual god, you know, interrupt, you know, and not to, you know, it's kind of like the Watcher. He has to sit there and and just observe sometimes. So yeah, like um, like they mentioned, um, Raiden cannot interfere unless he's challenged directly. Exactly. Mm, let's see here. If you could visit any of the realms um, in the entire franchise, which one would you choose? Mm, it's, you know, it's not a realm, but I would love to see the Sky Temple in person. You know, even though it's on the Earth realm, but still it's in the heavens, you know, that would kind of be yeah. neat. Because yeah. we already kind of know what the Nether realm is like and you know, Edenia and all of those other places. And I would have to say the Sky Temple. Um, who came up How with about the yourself? Um, I would probably want to um, see stuff like, um, even though I would have to be very well um, versed in martial arts, I would have to want to tr- see like all the realms and like, like visit. Um, like um like outworld and stuff like that. Yeah, see what that's like. And because, and I know because I'm a I probably wouldn't be able to go to Nether Realm because um I haven't done anything really evil. Right. And you have to but have you a, could be you could probably be teleported there, but not, you know, not stay more or less, yeah. you know? Yeah. yeah. That's and, neat. Yeah, like, kind of like see the sights and then get the F out of Dodge. <laughs> oh, yeah, exactly. You don't want to be, you don't want to stay there. Yeah, especially in that world. <laughs> it's like a bad hotel. You don't want to stay there. You just want, you're, you find out that one night you're like, oh, my God, this is horrible. You want yeah. to just get out. Like a bad night in Vegas. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, after all, Sin City. <laughs> exactly. Very I nice. Been to Vegas, but I have been to Atlantic City. I heard it's nice there. That's the, I haven't been there yet. So. Yeah, I actually went to Atlantic City twice. But and obviously was, you enjoyed it because you went two times, you know. Well, that was only so that I can get on the bus and go down further down south in New Jersey so I could meet up with my then girlfriend who lived near Cape May. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah, but she dumped me in, um, like, in 2016 and because I failed to communicate my feelings with her. And I was actually hoping on marrying her because she made me happy and we made each other laugh. And she was a Mortal Kombat fan, too. Oh, nice. Yeah. Well, that happens, you know. Maybe you guys will get together again or you'll. Yeah, I'm sure you'll find somebody new. Just, you know, yeah. don't give up yeah. hope. Uh, let's see here. Um, who came up with the character of mocap? Mocap is a John Vogel, uh, Steve Brand, Ed Boon joint. You know, they wanted to do a, a little homage because I was doing a lot of mocap for them. You know, for for you know all the games like Deadly Alliance, Deception, and Armageddon. I, you know, I did a predominant amount, and uh, I think it was just more of a a nod to like thank me that you know for doing you know the amount of work that I did for them. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I appreciate it. It's, it's it's great. It's one of those things where there are not too many actors who have a character made, you know, within a video game that they actually worked on. So I'm, I'm really honored and I really, you know, still appreciate that, you know, even though it was a tongue in cheek 
kind of nod or a joke, you know, and some people don't like them. And when I mean don't like them, because it's, you know, it's Mortal Kombat, you know, that you, you need to have a Mortal Kombat character in there, but I kind of appreciate it. Yeah. Just like a lot of people don't like Stryker. Yeah, I don't know why. You know, Stryker's a, you know, he's got good air defense, you know, anti air, you know, and, and good uh, a range tactic. You know, he's got up close. He's he's pretty well rounded, but yeah, I I get why people don't like him. But you know, he's just a he's just a cop, you know. But you know, there are a lot of a lot of police officers who are heroes. So you know, mm-hmm. got to learn. Yeah, I think it's because he, instead of using traditional like projectiles, like w- what Raiden would use, like he would use like lightning and stuff like that. Um, Striker used like grenades and um, a gun. I think that's why. And it didn't really sit well with the fans because he was using a gun instead of using um, hand to hand combat and stuff like that. Yeah, I, I could see that argument. You know, but, and it's, it's one of those things people pick and choose sometimes, like to ignore like Cyrex and, and Sector. They had, you know, they didn't think, have anything. To an extent, but yeah, I get it. You know, and but it, and once again, we we all you could ask fifty different people who least favorite, and somebody will pick one of your favorites. Oh, let's see here. And when you get to talk to your friend, you still. Yeah. Yeah, the video's acting a little bit. Yeah, it's just a well rounded. Oh, let me see if I can move over here. We better or worse? Uh, it's like you just like I can't see the latest, um, or stuff like that. Mm. Yeah, it's just like frozen in this one frame, like. When you were so it's lagging. It's probably yeah. like because I'm out. The, I'm out in the boonies. Yeah. So am I. <laughs> <laughs> well, do you have high speed at all? Um, we had. We used to have um, like rely on like Time Warner cable now Spectrum, but now we have our own modem without having to worry about that. Oh, that's good. Yeah, we have nothing out here. There's zero. I'm on my phone. That's it. Yeah, and I'm on my iPad. Very cool. Is it any any better? I'm okay, I'm moving yeah. around yeah, trying I mean, to. Yeah, it's better now. Awesome. Um, what is Kid Thunder's relation to Raiden? Is he like um his Raiden's son, Raiden's nephew, or a younger version of Raiden? I think at the time it was, you know, and, and, and you have to, somebody out there will know the lore, but I think it was a, a John Vogel, uh, you know, joint, and he just shrunk right into, to get that whole baby deformed, you know, anime style, mm-hmm. and it turned into, you know, Kid Thunder is like somebody related to Raiden, but eventually, since, you know, I had a son, I just... I, and this is not related to MK, but related to my life. You know, I constantly call my son Kid Thunder, and he, you know, I, when I look back at the game, I kind of feel like, hey, that was Raiden's kid. But in reality, it probably wasn't, you know. Yeah, it was probably like um, a family member or something like that. Exactly. Yeah, just somebody related to, to Raiden, you know. But it's pretty funny. I, I love the whole, like, you know the, the the sound call and everything. So, yeah. um, did your son um, portray Kid Thunder for Mortal Kombat Two? No, he he did do some motion capture stuff for us. Uh, by by, you know, he wasn't born until like two thousand and 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 one. Oh. You know, so. Um, what do you like the most about being a part of the franchise? Um, 
you know, because I was so close to the franchise, I would say, you know, just everything like motion capture, all of it, being able to, being able to, to, to give consistency for all the, the people who love the game, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, who do you think portrayed Raiden the best in the shows and movies? Out of all of them, I, I actually like Christopher Lambert the best. You know, it's it's just because I'm a, you know, I grew up in the 80s and 90s, you know, and I feel like he, he did the best job. And plus, you know, who doesn't like Highlander exactly. and all the other, you know, all the other movies he did, you know, just Four growing times. up in the 80s and having somebody you know, portray the character that you played as well is just, you know, that to me, I, I appreciated it doing that yeah and he would later on um um lend his voice and likeness in um mortal kombat 11 yes yeah i bet that was awesome awesome to see i i wish i could have been there you know they did all that stuff in burbank most of the sound stuff so meaning if it was like a, a, a star or a, a, a well-known actor, it's probably done in Burbank. They might have had him in, in in NRS, but, you know, we were always busy motion capturing. So you know, I, I never had any free time. Yeah, and I know Kerry Tagawa, who's known as Shang Tsung, was um, at um, NRS. Yes. I didn't get to meet him, but, you know, I heard he, I heard he was a fantastic guy to work with. Yeah, I actually talked to him in 2011 um, on the phone, and later on we actually had a video chat that same year, but this was before I even thought of this project, that, um, and he was really a nice guy, and he told me that, oh, like, I asked him a few questions, like, about this um, coat that he wore in the movie, and he said that. He doesn't own that, and like that was sold. And he also mentioned that it was really heavy to wear. Oh yeah. Yeah, I can relate because I actually have a leather trench coat, and that's pretty heavy. Yeah, they get they get pretty heavy, you know, with all the padding and everything. They gotta. I could see that, but you know what? He, a great actor, and he, you know, he he didn't complain about it, and just you know did his lines and yeah. did a great job. Yep. Yep, just shrugged it off. Exactly. Yeah. Unlike Jean Claude Van Damme when he was the original Predator, like he would complain that like it's too hot to wear this outfit and like, like later on left the project and um Kevin Peter Hall later on went to be the Predator. Yeah, you know, and 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 to to Van Damme's defense you know, he's got to wear a full latex suit, you know, and it's probably super hot, you know, I, I get it. Yeah, because it was filmed in Mexico. Well, it, it does get humid down there, you know. So. Yeah. yeah, but I you know, know I there once. Yeah. yeah. I was actually um, in Texas, and then we went, like, with my father, former foster brother, and I. Um, we went to San Antonio, and then we decided to visit um, a friend of my father's, um, who actually had one of his um, kids has a place in Brownsville, and then we went to visit them down there. Hi, we have family in Brownsville. And we then traveled across the border in a rental car, which was a big no-no. Oh, yeah. But, um, yeah, we walked around... Um, seeing the sights like just across the border like one of the border towns and like didn't go deep into um mexico but it's it, you know back then it's probably pretty safe you know now i don't i don't know i haven't been down there you know i'm sure certain areas are safe but you know it's like any it's like the united states some places are safe some aren't you know mm-hmm. how it is and i also some saw so some people homeless and struggling and I actually um, asked my father if I could um, give them some money to help them and 
I actually gave them some money. That's good. You're a good Samaritan for doing that. So that's a blessing that they, they had somebody like you to do that. Yeah, because I don't like seeing people homeless and stuff like that. I guess I get that um, behavior from my late great-grandfather because he would actually um, donate money and stuff like that to notable, like some charities and stuff like that. Right. And he well, would that's good. Some money to some homeless people that he would see out on the streets. And um, I guess I picked that up from him. Well, it's good to give to charity. You know, you have to give back. If you make a little, obviously, I understand why, you know, some people can't give too much. And mm-hmm. it's good to give every now and then to unfortunate people. Yeah. Yeah, my father does that now. Nice. Mm-hmm. Got a good family. Yeah. And he's not, even though he's not my real father, I see him as oh, my real father because he's the one that um, raised me from when I was six years old up until now. Nice. Yeah, I was adopted on my 10th birthday. Well, your, your family, you know. Mm-hmm. Like... Any man can be a father, but it takes a special man to be a dad. That's true. That's true. Mm, Let's see here. Do you still have any of the costumes from the first two games? Unfortunately, I don't have any of them. You know? I wish. And we all know that... um, the hat was destroyed when you were doing a stunt in um, Mortal Kombat 2. Yeah, the first hat got crushed, you know? Yeah. And, and something, you know, and, and there's like an inkling in the back of your head, you don't want it to happen, but you're like, man, we should just have, you know, and John did have backup ones, but, you know, mm-hmm. that's unfortunate. That was on my part. I should have did the stunt better, and then it would have got crushed, so. Yeah, well, you our mistakes. Yeah, exactly. Um, let's see here. Was Boraito inspired by Master Cho from the show Mortal Kombat Conquest? That I couldn't tell you. That that was more or less a uh, Hernan Sanchez uh, character that, you know, that was developed between him and, you know, everybody else in the group. You know, because I did his voice. I did his, you know, drunken style. So, you know, it's... Uh, we, we should ask Hernan one day, you know, just to just to get pick his brain and see who he... You know, because he was also into... It seems like everybody on the team had, like, a... a, a you know, we all had something... Uh, not that we would focus on, you know. I like martial arts movies. So did Lewis. So did everybody else. John Vogel, Ed, you know. And... Hernan was the same way. He liked uh, martial arts movies, so it's possible. And um, Hernan would later on do like the an answer voice and stuff like that, or like yeah, he did it. Before. Yeah, did that uh, landmark, you know, iconic, you know, sound for the you know for the new games, which is great. Hmm. Well, that's all the questions that I have. Mm. Thanks for doing this interview, Carlos. Brian, thank you. I really appreciate the time and 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 the blessings you you know you you've given to all of us being able to do something like this. It's really I really appreciate it. Yeah, I do it for the fans and like being a big fan myself. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Plus, you know, we talk a lot on Facebook and you know on Instagram. You know, it's uh-huh. it's, it's great touch and base. Yeah. And it's also a good way so that the future generations can understand, like, what it was like. Exactly. Yeah. To learn so the history. Lost. Yes, exactly. And you're doing a great job. Thank you for those. Those were really great questions. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to stop the recording.